Welcome to Football 360, Australia's best online football program. This week, we head north to Joondalup and catch up with new coach, Sal Tadoro. A legion of greats fly the flag for Australia in the annual Masters World Cup in Thailand and will reveal the winner of our iPad 2 competition. All that and more on Football 360. But first, ECU Joondalup are weathering a storm that's pushing them to the bottom of the ocean. But their captain and their new coach are confident of clear skies ahead. Still waiting for our first win, but it's really hard at the moment because we're trying to build for the future. The table never lies. We can say we've been unlucky in a few games, but we are down there at the moment. We honestly can see that and we're trying to work a way out of that. Their goal is simple, survive the year and avoid relegation. Oh, my personal goals are to keep this club in this league. Uh, I'd hate to be a part of a side that brings them down into the first division. I've been here that long and uh, I love the club, so just work damn hard to keep them up. ECU Joondalup has a short but proud and colourful history and already boasts some of our current Socceroos. Uh, we've got Reese Williams at uh, Middlesbrough in Australia, um, Shane Lowry playing at Millwall now, we've got Chris Hurd playing at Aston Villa and then there's the, the obviously the boys that are involved in the A-League. We've just got Tommy Amflit back from Perth Glory, Brandon O'Neill's just signed for the Glory. But right now, that stardom isn't doing them any wonders. What they need is results. We've not taken an hiding off anybody. We've been, uh, they've all been close games that we've played in. And now uh, I'm sure that Sal's going to turn, uh, turn it around. He's turned it around playing wise, it's just uh, results wise. And I'm sure we're not too far away from that happening. Sal Todoro is in a place he never expected to be. At the start of the season, he was at Morley Windmills taking them through their paces during the night series. We got the call good opportunity for me. It's not every day of the week that um, a Premier League club comes asking to go and coach them, so I thought it was a good opportunity, so i come across. The former Bayswater and Balcata coach admits he's got plenty of work to do. ECU have so far secured four points from eight games and sit second from bottom. One point coming from a draw against last placed NTC. I don't think enough people give the NTC boys credit that they deserve. It's a rebuilding year, you know, it's not good when a club changes coach so close to the beginning of the season and you know when something like that happens players leave so I've had to bring a couple of players in as well to try and fill the gaps. The goals that I've set for the boys is for us to try and hit mid-table but I think we want to look beyond that because if you don't um, set your sights high enough then you may fall into trouble so I think mid-table should be an achievable target for us. My favourite team is Barcelona and my favourite player is Lionel Messi. My favourite part of soccer player is scoring goals and playing with my friends. When I'm older I want to be a professional soccer player. Congratulations to Norm Phillips, he's the lucky winner of our 16 gig iPad 2 competition. Norm correctly answered Perth Soccer Club as the place we visited in episode 2. Football West will be in touch with all the details on how to collect the prize, thanks to all viewers who entered the draw. And if you missed out this time, don't worry, you'll have another chance to win a prize on Football 360. Well, here at Perth Glory, we thought we'd practice some of the things that make QBE great. Like 125 years of experience. We trolled a new fraud replacement policy. Can I have a... Thanks, Baz. And comprehensive cover? Well, that seemed like a pretty good idea too. Turns out, what's great for your insurance, not so good for football. QBE. See how competitive we are with your insurance. They may have had their fun in the sun, but a bunch of old greats fuelled by passion and hunger are flying the green and gold in Thailand.
for the annual Masters World Cup. This is my fifth year in charge. You know, we've won tw uh, twice, we've come runners up. And we didn't do as well last year, but we had a lot of injuries. At this stage, I think we've got Iran, who are the champions from last year. We've got England, and we've got our friends from last year in Scotland, which we gave them a 9 0 whipping. But uh, I think they'll certainly improve on last year. We've got a good blend, and we've got some of our 50 year olds that are, you know, very fit. Alan Potty at Norrie Sutton. Uh, are 50 years old, but they can play. And uh, we've also got an ex Australian international, Alan Davidson, who's 51, uh, who's played 69 times for Australia. He joins us from Melbourne every year. Robbie Dunn, Robbie Zabika, Craig Naven, all ex Perth Glory players, and uh, Alan McKenzie's also with the team. He's an ex Glory player. So, you know, we've got a, a fairly good sprinkling of players right across the board. Well, this will be my fourth tournament, and uh, to be quite honest, we're, we're quite fortunate. We have uh, Ken Maguire, Dr. Ken Maguire, that goes with us, and uh, he's he's like an extra man for us because he's the guy that patches and puts us back on the park the following night. The heat's just something unbelievable. Uh, you just can't get enough water into your body, but you, you go through the pain uh, just because you, it's probably the closest you'll ever get to being a professional again. Every team is, is very competitive up there and it's, it's 100 degrees and it's like 95% humidity. So at half time you can't breathe and it's very hard, it's, it's just very tough, it's a very, very tough tournament. Yeah, get to my age, just walking out there is pain and torture, but look, we're really looking forward to it. Been a few times now, the boys have actually won one of the tournaments. Uh, didn't have too good a year last year, so we're hoping to atone this year. Have you still got it? Oh, of course I have, mate. You, you saw me out there, I was uh, absolutely ordinary, wasn't I? <laughs> I think we'll do really well. Iran's going to be tough to beat, and Thailand always tough to beat up there, but uh, if we get through the group, I think we'll give it a real shake. Playing five games in six days, 40 minutes each way, is a very difficult assignment. You can't play that if you're a full-time professional, let alone you know, some of these guys are 55 years old. Uh, <laughs> you know, fronting up the next day is not an, an easy task. What keeps you playing? Oh, just the love of the game. You know, it's just the camaraderie of all the boys, you know, like, um, it's great to go out and see the boys all the time, have a beer, and it's just good that my legs allow me to keep running. You know, there's a lot of guys that I know that still want to play, but can't, so I just thank the lucky stars that I can still run around. It's time to look at the Match of the Week highlights now with Ashley Morrison. Inglewood United hadn't won a game on the road all season, and they started the game against Sterling Lions knocking the ball around well. That was until Sterling's Andy Brown dived in with a scything tackle on James Samet. Referee Hugh Best blew his whistle and deemed the challenge both rash and from behind and issued Brown with a straight red card. Sterling were down to 10 men in just the first minute. They took advantage of the extra man in the 19th minute, stretching Sterling across the park. First to the right, courtesy of Perich, Samet and Colley, before Kanigia cut in and ran across the box. He slipped the ball to Bozinski, who then fed Alex Jovic wide at the edge of the box. He cut inside Pugliese with ease and curled a looping shot over Hugo and into the back of the net. 1-0 to Inglewood. In the second half, Alex Kanigia picked out substitute Ryan Clark in space on the left. He drove into the box, had a shot, but it was well blocked by Corey Hugo. Inglewood had a better chance to double their lead and wrap up the match after Collie picked out Ryan Clark again on the left-hand side. He delivered a pinpoint cross to the back post, but Jovic's header went straight at Hugo. Today was comfortably our worst performance of the season, so you know to, to do that in the ninth game of the season or whatever it is, and. Uh... You know, we've got a lot of work to do and we're developing a culture in the club that probably hasn't been here, so it's, yeah, I'm really happy with things. Looking at other results from Round 9, Perth thrashed a depleted Western Knights 5-1, Valcatta just got over the line against ECU Joondalup, Floriot beat Bunbury Forum Force and Sorrento stunned Bayswater City 2-0. Which means if we take a look at the league ladder, Perth find themselves on top. Three points clear of Inglewood and Sorrento, and early front runners Florida and Bayswater slipped to fourth and fifth. 
The bottom of the table is still a fairly close affair, but a couple of wins to either Joondala, Bunbury Forum Force, Armadale or the Western Knights will see them jump up the table. Looking ahead to next weekend's fixtures, the pick of the matches would have to be Florida Athena versus Sterling Lions, as these two perennial rivals go head to head. Armadale will have a stiff challenge taking on Perth at home, while Bayswater and Balcata will be desperate to get back to winning ways. And the Western Knights will be looking for a win against ECU Joondalup to lift them away from the pack at the bottom of the table. And that wraps up another busy 360 episode for this week. Thanks for watching. You'll see us again next week.